this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Sanctify us in your truth, your word. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he's among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. The fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, 
and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 119, let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me. My, my lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word for all your commandments. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law. Let my soul live and praise you, and let your just decrees help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a, a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and their mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory, glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. 
What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where you Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where you You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs. The third article with this explanation. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text is from the Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 176. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible, and it sure ends differently than it begins. In verse 1, the psalmist writes, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. 
Well, the last verse is a, a change of, of tone. It doesn't have that same self-assured confidence. The psalmist still knows the law of the Lord, but he also knows that he hasn't kept it. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. For all his devotion to the law of God, the psalmist keeps wandering off into sinful ways and like a lost sheep, is like a lost sheep. He knows he has not walked according to the law. He knows he's lost. He knows he's in danger. And he knows he needs to be rescued. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, O Lord. Normally, we think of God up there in the confines of a splendid heavenly isolation, waiting for us to seek him, pursue him, find him. And indeed, in some Christian circles, there are a lot of people talking about when and where they found Jesus. But that's not the, how it works. In truth, we are the ones who hide from him. And he's always the one who must go out and find us again and again and again. He takes the initiative and tracks us down. One poet even gave him a new name, the Hound of Heaven. He wasn't being irreverent. He was rejoicing that God gives chase even as we flee from him. I've gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant. Throughout the Bible, God is continually having to seek out the lost. Right from the beginning, Adam and Eve, after rebelling against God, they make another poor choice by trying to hide themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. God will have none of it. He takes the initiative, the initiative Adam couldn't have taken, and he flushes them out. Adam, where art thou? God knows exactly where Adam is, crouching behind that bush, trying to make himself invisible, hoping that the all-seeing God cannot see him, poor, lost, miserable, sinful creature that he is. But God was not going to let Adam stay that way. He's going to force that relationship forward because that's who he is. And that's what he does. Our God is the God of pursuit. We're the ones who are inclined to flee from him. The psalmist who writes Psalm 139 complains about God's unfair advantages, complains about his omnipresence. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. There's no escaping God's supervision. You hem me in, he writes, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Remember how God ran Jonah down. To avoid jo uh, God's call, Jonah was going to flee all the way to the Tarshish, far side of, the, of Jonah's world. But God pursued Jonah all the way to the deepest, darkest depths of the sea. Contrary to popular assumption, God is not passive. God is not content to watch us flee from him. And he's not content to wait for us to come back to him because there's a good chance we never will. In our gospel lesson, Jesus asks the Pharisees, if you have a shepherd, if you're a shepherd with a hundred sheep and you lost one, what would you do about it? Would you ignore it? Would you shun it? Would you despise it? Of course not. A real shepherd will go out looking for that sheep and, quote, Keep on searching until he finds it. The shepherd finds the lost sheep, not the other way around. Never the other way around. 
And to reinforce the point, he tells the story of an old woman who has 10 silver coins. She loses one of them. So she lights a lamp in her dark house and turns it upside down, inside out. Like the shepherd, she looks for the coin, quote, until she finds it. That coin is you and me, inert, lifeless, still, passive, dead in our trespasses and sins. We're no more able to find God than a coin is able to find its owner. In Revelation, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. We don't have to climb some Himalayan mountain to find some guru who's reclusive. All his stuff is already out on the internet anyway. The Lord himself comes to us and knocks on our door, sometimes relentlessly. Writer Annie Lamott speaks of her conversion as one day standing outside a little church looking, listening to the people singing, finally stepping through the door. She stepped into the church, but also acknowledged that God all along had been pushing her, prodding her, moving her. She wrote, I took a long breath and said out loud, all right, you can come in now. We do not pursue God or seek him, mostly because as lowly sinners, <clears throat> we don't want to have anything to do with him. We're afraid of his consuming holiness. Remember Peter? Miraculous catch of fish. After a long night of fishing with nothing to show for it, Jesus shows up and tells Peter to pull out in the deeper water and let his nets down there. Peter knows it's not going to work, but he obliges because it's Jesus. He lets down his net, and so many fish swim into that net that the net begins to break. That's when it dawns on Peter. He's in the presence of a holy, righteous God. Stay away from me, Lord for I am a sinful man, he says. Jesus ignores that request. He does not stay away, because that's not who he is. He does not abandon Peter any more than he abandoned Adam. Even after Peter's threefold denial of Jesus, after the resurrection, the first person that Jesus wants to see is Peter. Not to scold him or even the score, but to forgive him and restore him. In our epistle lesson, Paul describes how far he had strayed. I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and an insolent opponent. But Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am foremost. One begins to think if Jesus does not give up on Adam or Jonah or Peter or Paul or the rest of them, maybe he won't give up on you and me. Indeed, you are here because you have a shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. You are here for no other reason than the fact that he left heaven and came down to earth to die for you on a cross and redeem you. You are here because your shepherd refused to give up on you. You were lost to sin and death, but he has sought you and he has found you. He has forgiven you and restored you to the flock by grace. Holy baptism, confession, and absolution. You are here because Jesus is not afraid to eat with sinners. Holy communion. In our gospel lesson, notice the contrast. The Pharisees and the scribes are grumbling because the shepherd and the women, while the shepherd and the woman are rejoicing. Pharisees are disgruntled because Jesus was welcoming all the wrong people and was even eating with the sinners. This offends their self-righteous assumptions, and Luke makes sure we notice it. On the other hand, in verse 5, when the shepherd finds his lost sheep, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, not grumbling. And when he comes 
home, he calls together his friends and the neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. The woman who finally finds her coin does the same thing. She too calls her together her friends and neighbors, Rejoice with me. Parable of the lost sheep, parable of the lost coin. What comes next is the parable of the lost son, parable of the prodigal son. What does the father do when the prodigal returns? He rejoices and asks everyone else to rejoice with him in a big banquet. Their first response is to be happy and to throw a party. Their joy isn't complete until they can share it with others. Whenever you get really good news, you want to share the joy, right? That's because you were created in God's own image who also wants to share the joy. There's something about God, just as there is in us, that wants to share the joy. Therefore, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Those angels of God. He, he delights in seeking and saving the lost. He, he doesn't begrudge the work. He celebrates when he finds them. He doesn't resent us for getting lost. He's just glad to have us back. And he created those angels in such a way, with such a temperament and a disposition that they're glad to have us back in the fold as well. And so they rejoice spontaneously. Somehow the angels Rejoicing makes me think of the retrievers that I've owned or have had in the past. They, they always go berserk whenever a guest comes into the house, barking and licking and so happy. I've never been able to train that out of them. I'm doing something wrong. I'm not sure what. But you, you personally are a cause of joy to, to the angels and to the Lord your God. You matter to him. And you make him happy whenever you repent. And you make him happy because he has found you. Zephaniah 3, the Lord your God is a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Can you imagine the Lord exulting over us? Loud singing, what have we done to deserve that? That's how he wants us to be as his church as well. After a long absence, some come back. Be like the retrievers. You don't have to jump on them and lick them and bark at them. Be happy to see them. Be like the, the angels. Don't grumble think, well, it's about time. Rejoice as the Lord rejoices. One last thing. As you know, Bethesda gave us these windows. They also gave us some other things, including this statue of Jesus and the Lamb. I know what some of you were thinking when you came into the sanctuary. Ach, Himmel. Warum so katholisch, right? But if you think about it, it, many of you grew up in churches with a statue of the Lord up front um, along the Rerodos. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, it's a beautiful sculpture, um, uh, one piece of wood from top to bottom, except for the staff and, of course, the, the base. Usually it's in my office. Um, I love it there, actually. But if the congregation chooses to have it in the sanctuary, which we have plans for, it could possibly go up against the, the Rerodos, be mounted on the wall. That would be your choice. I like to point it out in, in counseling, um, because if you look closely, this lamb, he's not fighting his position here. He seems rather content, doesn't he? He's not squirming or pushing away like a, a two-year-old does or trying to wriggle out of his grasp. 
And Jesus himself is leaning in, affectionate. I guess that makes sense. He loves us, right? And if you look at just the right angle, you'll see that there's a little smile on the lamb's face. Again, he seems to know that he's in a good spot, a very safe spot. I'd encourage you to come up afterwards and look at, take a closer look, bring your children too. This lamb is you. You're in a safe place because of the Lord Jesus Christ and his grace, his mercy. No, no reason to wriggle out of his grip. No reason to flee. This lamb is you. He has sought you. He has found you. He has forgiven you. And he rejoices over you. At long last, you're home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Seek your servant, O Lord. Seek all your servants, our children, our grandchildren, our friends and neighbors, our siblings, our co-workers. Seek those who are fleeing from you because they're afraid of your holiness. Seek those who hate you because they've been taught untruths. Seek those who try to ignore you because they pretend you don't exist or don't care, or cannot be known. Seek your servants, O Lord. Use us also to turn in love and pursue all who still flee, that they too might find rest and peace in you, and that we might love one another as we are truly loved. Through Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen.
In our prayers, we pray for the family of Dave Pedersen, who was, um, uh, his funeral was on Friday, and for the family of Ray Gralia, whose funeral was yesterday. We pray also for Art Malker, who is in the hospital, for John D. Metropolis, who is undergoing a procedure, I think, this week, for Steve Porter, Irma Shaneke, Gail Algiers, Mary Wagner, Burl Beely, Stephanie David, Chad Frenzel, Phyllis Selmer, Terry Beely. Prayers of thanksgiving for Larry and Gail Gaugert, who are celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary, and for Ted Algiers. Uh, he had a successful surgery with a favorable outcome. Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, and dying, and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the grieving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are celebrating, for the Gaugerts and for Ted Algiers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Again, for those who are lost, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you've caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.